Good morning, and welcome to Unity Church of Practical Christianity's virtual version of our service. We're pleased that you're joining us today. Today we'll be offering a meditation time in addition to our Sunday message, which will come from Reverend Mickey Quinton. Throughout the service, special music will be provided by Angela Rapon, our musical director, and Julianne Tepco. At the end of the service, we'll share some other ways that we're staying connected with you, our Unity family, during this time. Our mission at Unity Church is to realize and express our oneness with God. Our vision statement is that we are a loving, spiritual community where we teach, share, and express unity in all life. Now together, let's join together in affirming our statement of faith. Together. God is all, both invisible and visible. One presence, one mind, one power is all. This one that is all is perfect life, perfect love, and perfect substance. I am an individualized expression of God. I am ever one with this perfect life, perfect love, and perfect substance. Today's daily word is love. I am a loving presence to everyone I meet. It has been said that the world needs more love. The truth is that all the love the world could ever need is already present everywhere because God is love and God is present everywhere. Created in God's image, I am divine love in human expression. I know that love is much more than a positive feeling. Divine love is the energy of oneness itself. As I remain centered in divine love, I know oneness in God with all people, including those who are dear to me and those I've never met. Divine love helps me see good everywhere and in everyone. I look beyond conflict and limitation and find the good that is always mine to discover. And from 1 John chapter 4, verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. As we begin our time of meditation, I invite you to get comfortable to feel the support of your chair or the couch or the floor. Perhaps to feel your feet beneath you or grounding you to the earth. And now I invite you to close your eyes and then to take a deep breath in and out and in and out. Breathing in peace, breathing out worries, breathing in health, breathing out disease, and feeling with each breath that you are becoming more and more relaxed. Meditation is a time for us to be here now, to connect with our present moment awareness. And it is often in this present moment awareness that we feel a profound closeness with spirit. Present moment awareness asks that we simply be here now rather than to have one foot in the past and one foot in the future, we fully and completely experience each moment as it happens and then let it go to make way for the next moment as it happens. Do that perfectly. And when you notice 
notice a thought that belongs to the past or the future. Simply notice it and let it go. And now I invite you to really focus on your breath. Notice yourself breathing in, filling your lungs, and then notice yourself exhaling, emptying them. Let this be a continuous process of in and out. Now think about where do you experience your breath? For some of us, we experience our breath in our chest with it rising and falling, rising and falling with each breath in and out, in and out. Others experience their breath in their abdomen as their belly expands and contracts with each breath in and out. Still others will experience their breath entering and exiting their body through their nostrils. Wherever it is for you, that is your anchor. And just as an anchor tethers a boat in rough waters, so your breath can keep you grounded in present moment awareness. Anytime you notice yourself starting to focus on the past or traveling mentally into the future, you simply need to focus on your breathing and your anchor will always bring you back to the present moment. Take a few moments now to focus on your breath, practicing present moment awareness. Know that by doing so, you are strengthening your connection with spirit within. Should your mind wander, just gently bring it back to your anchor without judgment, breathing in and out. Approach the end of our time of meditation. Just continue to breathe in and out. In and out. And take whatever time you need to return to that chair or couch or floor. Bringing with you the sure knowledge that God is always present for us always right here, right now for us. And that connection to spirit is as close as our next anchoring breath. And for that, we say thank you, God. Thank you and amen.
appreciate you tuning in with us today. <clears throat> I'd like to share a story with you about a man who was a member of a <clears throat> major Christian movement. And this movement had started out, uh, like many do, as young and fledgling and kind of obscure and pretty well ignored. But it began to grow and began to make a major impact all around the world. <clears throat> now this movement was kind of solitary, new, and kind of a, to itself. Uh, they tended to be a little fundamentalist and uh, tended to look down their nose at the more mainline or established churches <clears throat> that they esteemed to be somewhat uh, intellectual and stuffy. <clears throat> but there came a time when this man, this major leader in this movement, thought that should change. He thought there should be dialogue with other faith traditions. He felt that uh, they should no longer be off to themselves, but they should reach out to those that maybe believed a little different than they did in the spirit of understanding, which was a very good motive. I think it's always good, don't you? When we reach out to those that may see things differently than we do because we can learn from them and, and hopefully they can learn from us. So uh, he began to have meetings with the leaders of a uh, of the one group that they had pretty well uh, ignored in his movement, and this movement had ignored them, called the World Council of Churches. And if there was ever a group that his movement generally looked on as intellectual, stuffy, and out of touch, it was the World Council of Churches. But he nobly thought, you know, we need to reach out to each other. We need to promote understanding and dialogue. And so they began to have meetings and get-togethers and begin to talk to each other, which was a wonderful thing. The ice began to break. And, and then one day in a meeting, a question came up, a question he'd kind of been dreading and hoped nobody would, would raise. And this question put him on the spot, and he had to give it some serious thought. Uh, one of the ministers of the World Council said, are you saying that your movement has the truth and all of our other churches do not? And he froze for a minute and thought, I don't want to mess this up. Because uh, this had been kind of a part of the contention between them, is that uh, they believe, you know, we, uh, we're a, a dynamic movement. We're bringing the truth as nobody else. And these other guys are just stuck in the past. And he didn't want to come across that way. And so he uh, breathed a quick prayer. Lord, give me wisdom here. And suddenly from out of nowhere he thought about his freezer at home which seemed God but then the truth began to dawn on him and he smiled and he knew the answer to give he said you know Reverend at home I have a freezer that has some very fine prime Texas beef steaks in it and if you go to my freezer you can take a steak out and lay it on the counter Yep, sure enough, it's steak. If you analyze it in a lab, it would be pure beef. And in its frozen state, there's no denial, this is a steak. But a funny thing happens when I take that steak and I lay it on my backyard grill, it begins to sizzle. And my grandkids come over and they get a whiff of that and they say, oh, I want some of that. That smells good. He said, the fact is we both have the truth. Difference is you have yours on ice, we have ours on fire. And it was an excellent analogy to consider that truth on fire is what makes a difference in people's lives. And I want to submit today, unity is truth on fire. It was started, and, and indeed its name is the Unity Church of Practical Christianity. The truth that works in day-to-day -day life. Our, our founders, uh, Charles and Myrtle Fillmore, uh, wanted something that would prove itself in daily living. And so they began a quest to explore the, the faith tradition that they had and yet find uh, the practical aspect of it as never before. And the reason why we're standing here today, because they 
put fire to that truth. And it's changed the lives of so many. If you'll permit me to read from the story of unity. As, as you, uh, many of you know, Myrtle Fillmore was afflicted with tuberculosis from a, from a young age. And it was widely expected she would have it all her life and ultimately die from it. But since she got a hold of a truth, she heard someone say this and it began to get inside of her. I am a child of God, and therefore I do not inherit sickness. I am a child of God, and therefore I do not inherit sickness. Like the little leaven that leavens the whole loaf, this thought was to work in her until it made her every bit whole. It was not to let her go until through her thousands had been made whole too. It was not to let her go until she and her husband, who was soon set afire with it too, had founded a faith that reached around the world and blessed the lives of millions, who with her would joyously declare, I am a child of God, and therefore I do not inherit sickness. They began to find the, the truth in unity, truth on fire, and began to make a difference. And within a period of two years, she was cured of tuberculosis. And uh, said in her two years, Myrtle Fillmore was no longer an invalid. Through her prayers, she was made absolutely whole. So the Fillmores did not deliberately set out to found an organization. Mrs. Fillmore set out first to find healing for herself. Having found that, she wanted to share her discovery with others. And she found that people wanted that discovery as much as she wanted to give it to them. People hearing of the change in her came to her and asked her for help. And the story goes on, there's, there's a, a lot of stories in here in relation. For example, their neighbor who uh, was on crutches uh, uh, was cured and, and uh, made, uh, made whole. Uh, the lady who uh, took care of their laundry who had asthma. Ms. Fillmore suggested prayer. And within a short time, she was made whole. Just uh, story after story of when, these, when the Fillmores found the truth that is on fire. And this is the truth that will make the difference. You know, fire can be many things. We know it has a destructive aspect. Uh, we've seen on the news uh, destructive things happening, you know, with fire right now. Uh, terrible things. It, it can consume and destroy. We uh, spoke recently of, of fire in relation to, uh, to the uh, hell of fire or Gehenna, which is uh, not a place of future eternal torment as we, sh as we demonstrated, but is a now a purging from our lives of that which is holding us back, helping, uh, keeping us from being our best selves. That's the nature of fire. But I want to speak to you this morning concerning, uh, as, as a temperature check, as the title is, the spectacular nature of fire. Fire is a, can be a spectacle that attracts people. Uh, fire has, has a, the energy that it harnesses and and the appearance that creates tends to attract and draw people. I want to submit to you that when we are set ablaze, people will come to watch us burn. And that's what we want to be. The kind of fire that attracts people, that people want to, want to see it demonstrated and want to get a, a, some of it in their own lives. David said in the Psalms, the zeal of your house has consumed me. The zeal of your house has consumed me. When we are consumed by truth, when we are set ablaze by truth, it will make an enormous difference in the world we live in. And how many know, if, with all that we're seeing around us right now, a pandemic, riots, how many know the world needs to see people that are set afire with truth and set afire with love? I remember uh, from the book, uh, The Greatest Salesman in the World, uh, one of the... Uh, pledges that it asks you to make at the end of the book goes always will I bathe my days in the golden glow of enthusiasm always will I bathe my days in the golden glow of enthusiasm when we're enthusiastic and set a fire with truth what a difference it will make for us and so many other people I remember uh, in the uh, earlier days of my ministry I uh, was uh, driving a school bus to supplement what at the time was a, a kind of a meager minister salary. And I would uh, get up really early and uh, drive my school bus and, and I, would, uh, I would greet the kids when they came. These kids were barely awake. 
That's a good morning, young Americans. Welcome and ready for a great day of learning, growth, and personal development. And they just, and thought, what is it with this guy? But after a while, they begin to look forward to it. They said, you know, we could get a kick out of you. You know, they were responding to the enthusiasm that I was bringing that they didn't really feel too much of. How many know the world needs people like that? The world needs people that are set afire and enthusiastic about living their lives. I want to submit to you there are three ingredients required for a fire. You probably know this. It's called the fire triangle. They are heat, fuel, and oxygen. Now, looking at this metaphysically, oxygen is a is representative of spirit. And indeed, the word spirit comes from the Greek word pneuma, which means breath. So we need spirit working in our lives, the Christ within us, in order for there to be fire in our life. Secondly, we need fuel. Something has to be able to be ignited. And fuel is representative of what we take into our lives. You got to ask yourself, you know, what am I absorbing? What uh, if, if we're just uh, absorbing what we hear on the news or in day-to-day -day life, I mean, that, you know, that can be kind of negative and uh, not really good fuel. You need to set aside some time to take in good stuff. Uh, read uh, the sacred writings, the teachings of Jesus, the Buddha, etc. Inspiring things. Take in something each day, even for just a little while, that, that feeds you. Uh, it doesn't have to be necessarily books. It can be recordings. It can be music. Something uplifting, something that fuels your life to create the fire that the world needs. And finally, you've got to have heat. And heat is the energy of life. We talked about recently how that there is no, essentially no force of evil. Evil is simply the absence of good. Just as there is essentially not a force of cold. Cold is the absence of heat. How many know we want to generate that heat energy through the power of being set afire on truth. Generate that enthusiasm that everyone around us is so desperately in need of right now. And with the power of the Christ within, we will do it. And so it is. Thank you so much, uh, Reverend Quentin, for that message. I feel energized and fueled. And uh, Julian, your singing was beautiful. I really do feel like we were sitting on holy ground listening to you. As we have been discussing, we will be returning to in-person -pers services su next Sunday, June 7th. And in doing so, we will be adhering to the purposeful gathering guidelines and limits from the city of Memphis. Details of exactly what this is going to look like for us have been posted in our email blast. We have postings on our webpage and Facebook, and there's a mailer uh, that has gone out to members and regular attendees. We're very excited about seeing your face in our space in a safe and cautious manner. We will continue to live stream our service on Facebook, but it will be starting at 1030, our regular service time. We hope that you will continue to engage with us in 10 or 15 minutes of daily conscious meditation each day, virtually at 11 a.m. And we will continue to live stream our own silent unity prayer service with the Reverend Crooks each Wednesday at 11, using this as our collective meditation time on Wednesdays. Remember that you can request prayers through our prayer request portal on our website. And speaking of our website, please continue to check out the We're All in This Together post on our events and activities page that will give you resources to help you maintain connection and ideas for things that you can do while we continue to maintain appropriate social distancing. Donations can be mailed into the church office or you can scroll down to the important announcement post on our Facebook page and find the link to donate. Or donations can be made online via our website on the Ways to Support the Church page. We love you. We bless you. We behold the Christ in you. And we know that even apart, we are all still one. The light of God surrounds you. The love of God enfolds you. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you. 